Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are continuing the test of fluid transfer to see what works the fastest. In this video we're going to see specifically how much can be transferred efficiently and effectively through a hose. So this will be directly relevant to tanker ships, offloading of trucks, all the kinds of stuff like that. So we're going to start off with what we took a look at in the previous video. So make sure you watch that if you have not. And what we're going to do is go and add the hose node just like this and attach it like that. So those are going to be connected via hose. And likewise, we'll do the same here. In this case, I'll paint it green to denote that you only have the liquid being transferred here rather than everything going there. Now, this is where it gets interesting. You see here we previously had two points of intake going into the tank. Well, not anymore. Now we're going to have to merge them together and make a single point. So I'll just move them back right there. And what we'll do is take this. We'll leave one of them. Put this there. Take the other one. Just close it off. And now here, it'll have to be sealed up into one continuous chamber. So we'll take the pipe, close it off like this with the corner and do that. Okay. All those will be connected after. Now here's where it gets interesting because we have all this stuff. Now we've concluded that this one doesn't really help us too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of this. And what we'll do instead of this is actually run a test to see what happens if we have less than the four pumps that we had here. I actually made tests four, five, and six have the small pumps. Now in this one, we're going to get rid of two of them and we'll make it simply a two pump setup. Over here, we're gonna get rid of one of them, make it a three pump setup, and here we'll keep all four. So in this case, we'll see how two and how three and how four of these small pumps behave. Of course, this has to get turned into a single node and that has to happen for all of them. So I think that this will be the true test of that offloading situation because of course you don't always have all of these points. Of course you can have, you know, a multiple uh, a tanker with multiple pumps and multiple nodes going to multiple things, but that's not always the case and sometimes you can't do that. So in this case, we're going to be testing that. There we have it. So this one goes to the single point. These three go to the single point. These four go to the single point. And here we made this go to the single point. So one thing I have to do is connect all the hoses, make sure that they start off connected. And once that's done, we can run the test and see exactly what happens with these setups. So we'll start it up and take a look at what happens. But like I said, right now we're putting everything through a single hose system. So we got our base case. We get the base case with a single output. We get dual intake, dual output, but going through a single hose. One pump, two, or th two pump, three pump, four pump setups. And then our new best case, which instead of having the pressure relief valve, it actually feeds it back into the tank there. Okay, I'm going to stop it now and see. So we get 4,600 in that first one, 4,300 in the next one, 4,800 in our previous, call it best case. Now I'm going to jump over to the very last one here, 5,000. So we got 48 compared to 5,000. So again, proving that this is taking the cake. This is our new best case where we pressure, we put the pressure back into the main tank. So we're getting 5,000 there. Now let's take a look at the dual small pump setup here. So 3,500. So obviously much worse than the 5,000 here. Then we get 3,500 and we get 3,500. All right. So it gets only marginally better in these instances when we are running 
the hose system. Yet this one keeps growing. So over here, we're hitting 6,000 now, whereas here we're at 43, 44, 43, we're at 6,000 here as well. So this one is 300 liters more, but it does not mean that having even four pumps or three or two of the small ones going through a single hose is any better. So I'd say that's an interesting outcome because that would directly impact how things are offloaded how a train could be unloaded from a single point, how a truck could be unloaded from a single point. Because I thought previously, all right, let's just put like four pumps, like let's do what we did here. But you can see all of them are attached. They all go into that one node there. So I don't know. This one is still taking the cake with the single pump setup. Before someone says that I should use the directional valve, well, I did. I now have the directional um, node here and what it does is prevent backflow into the pump. So I went ahead and did this, ran the test and even still when we have 5800 here, we have just under 4000 here, 3800 here, 3600 here and what's interesting is all of these will actually fluctuate with their flow rate. So these are fixed flow rate. They're just kind of steadily chugging along. But these three are really jumping between zero. And that is interesting, actually, because if I jump up here and take a look at that, you can see that we're getting steady transfer. But each one of these pumps is cutting off. So this may be that pressure uh, value that I heard now, that if we end up with a very um, different pressure, more than 10 atmospheres, that we can actually end up cutting the pump off. So that may be what we're seeing here in this case, on both of these examples actually, even here too. So in here we're getting that. Now what is the pressure inside that chamber? Well, we're at 5.5 and here we're at 1.3. So we're not past that 10 atmosphere threshold even, but even still, these pumps are fluctuating and jumping between on and off or doing something and doing nothing. So that was a very simple test just to see with a hose what transfer of fluids looks like. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments if there are some other tests that I can run or tests that you've ran and found out all kinds of things. So let me know that. Hopefully this video helps you for your creations. Um, I do want to note that my job and my intent is not to find the best, best ever fluid transfer system. It's just to optimize my existing creations and use a system that's not really super slow or outdated. So judging by this, it seems that I've now found out what I could do for my tanker trucks, for example, to make them better. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Stay tuned for more creations. And as always, Happy Stormworks, everyone. See you next time.